Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are headed to the Goodwill bins where I'm gonna pick out some items that I can completely transform using different paint techniques. So I think y'all are gonna absolutely love today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's a big urn. Look at this thing. It's probably like a foot and a half tall. And it has some damage right here. But I wonder if I could make this look cool with maybe a textured paint technique or something. Look, it already has some built-in cracks. It'll look beautiful with some tall sprigs of greenery coming out. This would be great to put on the floor as well if you just need something in a corner. All right, I think I'm going to get it. The first thing I want to do is just sand the spots that have chips just to make them nice and smooth. Now I want to add even more texture to this piece. I'm taking Fusion's Cathedral Taupe and Dixie Belle Sea Spray, which is a texture additive that can be added to any paint. I'm not going to apply it to the whole piece. I'm just going around in random areas and really making it thick and trying to get as many peaks and textures as I can in the areas that I did apply it to. Now I'm going to take Dixie Belle's Patina Paint in the color iron. It's kind of like this beautiful grayish black color and I'm going to apply it to the entire piece. It took two coats of paint to get the coverage that I wanted on here. This is what it looks like after my two coats have dried and I wasn't worried about full coverage because I'm going to go back and sand the entire thing, especially in the spots where I added the cathedral taupe. I'm going to sand those peaks that I created down and that color is going to come through as well as the color of the original pot. We are going for lots of texture and color variation in this piece. All right, guys, here is where the magic happens. So with the patina paint, you want to get the patina sprays. And I really like the combination of the blue spray and the green spray. So I am spritzing both of those on the piece and I'm dabbing with a tape paper towel just to kind of get them to mix together and not have any spray marks. And I want to go super thick on the top and the bottom. I am okay if it drips down because that's going to create a really cool effect at the end. So I want Want lots of color variation at the top and the bottom of this piece and then you'll see how the middle is just a little bit more muted and the patina spray will only react with the areas that have the iron patina paint so all those areas that I sanded the patina paint off will not have a reaction and it's going to make a really cool effect it takes a minute for the reactions to start happening so you just want to spray it and then walk away for about an hour and then come back and look at it you will be amazed so let's go ahead and cut to the final pictures of this piece this piece came out exactly like I imagined and looks amazing in my house so with the iron patina paint and the green and the blue spray you get these amazing colors a rusty effect I absolutely love it I put it in my master bathroom and although I thought it looked great there I feel like it's too small so while I'm on my thrifting adventures I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for a bigger piece just like this that I can do the same effect to and put in this spot. I just can't believe how amazing this $3 piece came out. And I loved it so much I had to find a spot for it in my house so it is in my living room. Pick this up because I have a project I want to do but I need two of them so I think I'm going to put this back but that's a really you know it you know what, we can just keep it in a DIY sash. I might find another one later on. This piece is for my house and I have a specific spot I wanna put it in and a specific look that I'm going for. I want it to be very neutral and just kind of blend into the background. So I'm painting the whole thing white. I'm using Dixie Belle paint in the color fluff, which is a great kind of bright white. This is my little craft table sander. If you do not have one of these in your DIY stash, 
you definitely need one. I will leave this one linked in the description for y'all. And I'm just going to lightly sand this piece in the room that it's going in. I feel like a distressed look is going to go well. The reason that I wanted this longer clipboard is so that I could add wording to the bottom. So if you don't know how to add wording without fancy Cricut or machine or something like that, I'm about to show you a very easy way to do it. So I just printed out the words that I wanted on a sheet of paper. I took some carbon paper, you know, like you used to use back in the day to make copies. And I'm just going to trace over the words and the carbon paper is going to transfer it onto my piece. And now that I have an outline to work with, I'm going to take a paint pen and just go over the letters. It kind of looks like hand lettering, except that you don't have to be a hand lettering expert. I'm using this painter's paint pen. It is a fine tip. It is my absolute favorite paint pen. And I will link in the description all of the material that you need to do this. I just ordered it off of Amazon. And with this method, you can customize your work wording and your size for whatever project piece you want to add typography to. And lastly, I sealed it up with a clear coat. My five-year-old loves making artwork, so I wanted this clipboard to go over her desk. And as you see, there is space for two of them, but I think this will work for now. And if I find another one, I can definitely add it in later. She loves putting her artistic touch on everything. This is a chair that she decorated herself. She came home from school with this huge poster that she had painted, and she wanted to hang it up in her room. Luckily for her, mom is a picture frame hoarder and I had one the perfect color and size for her room. I hope y'all are enjoying today's project so far. I just wanted to tell y'all about my next whatnot sale. But before I tell y'all about my sale, let me tell y'all a little bit about Woodnot in case you have not heard of it. It is an online selling platform where all day long there is different auctions going on and it could be anything that you are interested in. So they have the rusty crusty home decor that we both love. They also have new clothing, vintage clothing. They have glassware. They have ephemera. They have live plants. Pretty much anything and everything Thing that you could be interested in. They have an auction going on 24 hours a day. It is such a, a fun site where you can find all kinds of unique items. And if you are new to Woodnot and you are not on the platform yet, I actually have a link in the description where you can get a $10 coupon on your first purchase. And if you're interested in selling on Woodnot like me, I also have a link to become a seller. Now, my sale is going to be Thursday, April 25th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it's going to be one of my mystery box sales. So you see these two boxes right here? It is full of the beautiful, rusty, crusty, vintage home decor items that we, are, that we love. But actually somebody else shopped for me. So I don't know what's in the box. You don't know what's in the box. And so we're gonna open them up together. I'm gonna show you the item and I'm gonna put it up for auction and all of the auctions start at a dollar. It is so much fun. I know y'all are gonna love it over on there on whatnot. So make sure you make it to my next sale, April 25th. All the links are in the description and I will see you over there. I used Dixie Belle's mint julep color over the Christmas holidays to create faux jadeite ornaments. But when I saw Emily in the Julie's Designs and Signs group using it for all her spring projects, I just knew I had to use this color for spring. I had this cute little duck planner in my thrifted stash and I figured it could definitely use a paint job. I grabbed my Nick Dixie Belle mint julep chalk paint, my Stallmaster pointed stash paintbrush and y'all, Look at the coverage. I only had to put one coat of chalk paint on here. I let the chalk paint dry and then I grabbed the Dixie Belle white wax and the Dixie Belle Fr French tip paintbrush. It is my favorite paintbrush to use with waxes. I'm going to put the white wax on the entire piece and then I'm going to take a dry paper towel and just lightly wipe it off. And this really brings out all the details and even lightens the color a little bit more. If you wanted to darken the color, you would add a darker wax 
or you could not wax it at all, but just make sure that you are sealing your chalk paint. I am absolutely loving this fresh spring color. It pairs perfectly with pink and kind of has a shabby chic vibe. These are the pink Mayflower blooms from our website. And if y'all remember the little salt and pepper shakers from last week's video, they fit perfectly in here. Here's a cute little wood tray right here. It has heart cutouts, but I think I can fix that. I love the shape and that the handle's down here and not way up here. This little box is gonna be so much fun to paint and then to style up. I'm really feeling like it needs an older look. So when you want an old, worn, chippy, authentic vintage look, milk paint is definitely the perfect option. If you love the fusion all-in-one paint in the color Bayberry, they actually have it in milk paint form as well. That is what I'm going to be using on this box. It's a beautiful, deep green. And if you haven't used milk paint before, it does come in a powder form and you mix half a powder with half water, mix it up really well, and then it's ready to paint like any other paint. I let the first coat of paint dry. Now I'm putting on the second coat. You pretty much always need two coats of milk paint unless you're just trying to do a wash. And with my second coat of paint, I like to take my heat gun and dry it because what happens is it just dries in place and it gives lots of great texture. And also you get some crackle. The wood on this tote was very dry. So I did not get a lot of crackle, but what I did on the edges of this box, I went back and I added in more milk paint and dried it in place and that gave me some really great texture and even a little bit of crackle. So that's a little milk paint hack to get the look that you're going for. Then I took some sandpaper and also a baby wipe and distressed my milk paint until I got the exact look that I was going for. I always pick up random metal pieces because you never know when you're going to need one. And I thought these would cover up the little heart cut out perfectly, but I did want to add a little bit of milk paint to it just so that it blended in a little bit more with the tote. I glued the metal piece on each side over the heart and that is it. This tote is done and ready to be styled up. I styled this piece up with some vintage bobbins and spools and also some greenery. I feel like it has a very rustic but also shabby chic vibe. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what's your favorite project. I feel like it's pretty obvious, but I absolutely loved the big urn planter and I want an even bigger one. So we are gonna be looking out for that at the Goodwill bins and I wanna do the same technique. But the great thing about the patina products is literally kind of like milk paint, you can get a different finish every single time you use it, which is so cool. And all of the paint and products and greenery that I use in today's video can be found on my website, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And y'all don't forget to come check me over on a whatnot for some fun live auction selling and i will have everything linked in the description for y'all i will see y'all next week for another diy video bye guys y'all have a great day